philosophical nonsense, bloated, self-indulgent. If you were to tell me that this is how you view Megalopolis and that Francis Ford Coppola is is as past his sell by date, get it. But equally, if you were to tell me that this is quietly genius, this is an intellectual thought provoker, this is one of the movies that's going to linger in your mind for a long time, I'd probably say I agree with you as well. This this treads the line so bloody thinly between genius and let down like misfire obsessive I, I francis ford coppola has given me single-handedly the hardest movie i'm going to review this year we're in the home stretch nearly at 50,000 subscribers so please do keep hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already i still see over 90 percent of you watch my content without subscribing Guys, just hit that subscribe button, it's free, it helps me so much and allows me to keep bringing you the content that you guys are watching. So go ahead and do all that, let's get back to the video. It's pretty unanimous that people do not like this movie, it is an unmitigated box office failure, but let, let us not forget that the box office is never a reflection of true quality. Uh, the Shawshank Redemption completely flopped at the box office when it came out, and most of the Transformers movies make over a billion. Take that as you will. Even describing what Megalopolis is about is, is, is really difficult. But here goes. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis is a long-awaited, ambitious project that has been in development for decades, described as a sprawling epic blending science fiction and philosophical exploration. The story revolves around an architect's attempts to rebuild New York City as a utopian metropolis after a disaster has left it in ruins. The film is set against the backdrop of a futuristic society grappling with conflicts between traditional values and progress, exploring themes of political strife, human ambition, and the pursuit of a perfect society. Stylistically, Megalopolis combines elements of Roman history with modern urbanism, often drawing parallels to the fall of ancient civilizations and the idea of rebirth through innovative design and governance. Coppola is clearly aiming to create a film that will challenge audiences both intellectually and visually. And look, I, I, I gotta say, from that standpoint alone, just before I continue, I said it at the top, this movie, for me at least, it's festering in my mind. It's making me wonder just what the hell is it all about? Is it just the ramblings of a geriatric? Or are there some really profound narrative stories, characters, meanings, themes, the whole shebang? Is that present? I kind of think it is. The fact that he's self-funding this movie too, is, is an alarm bell. I mean, let's not forget, I mean, it's tragic because the film is a box office flop, but he sold his vineyard to fund the financing of this movie. No studios would fund it. And yeah, it's it, financially, it has been a failure, but there's more to this movie than the finances. The ensemble cast includes Adam Driver, N Natalie Emmanuel, Lawrence Fishburne, John Voigt, Shia LaBeouf and Aubrey Plaza, among others. The film's production is particularly notable for Coppola's use of groundbreaking technology and his unique approach to production design, aiming to create a futuristic yet timeless city. And yeah, I, I, I gotta say on this note, his vision of New York is breathtaking. His choice of camera angles, the way he frames his shots, the way he has encapsulated New York. It, it's the best I've seen since Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in America. Like, it is breathtakingly beautiful the way he's depicted New York in this movie. I mean, visually, this movie is a freaking treat. <laughs> like, for the visuals alone, yeah, you should absolutely see this in the cinema. Um, but obviously, visuals are not always enough. But it, it's so. <laughs> Coming back to what I said a moment ago, it's that cross-section of referencing the fall of the Roman Empire with modern urbanism that makes this, for me, that actually makes this movie a head-scratcher and makes me wonder, is this genius? Like, is this actually quietly genius? I, I, I'd actually even go so far as to raise this. Think about this. The Godfather was hated when it first came out. Go back, go and check the history books. Critics 
and audiences did not like The Godfather when it first came out. Likewise for Apocalypse Now, which was also a box office failure. These are just facts. And obviously these films have aged like a fine wine and we've come to appreciate them over time. I'm going to put the question out there. Is Megalopolis, I'm not saying it's The Godfather or Apocalypse Now, Jesus no. But is it going to age really well? And again, despite me completely understanding if audiences say that this is the most pretentious piece of crap they've ever seen. I fully get that. I think it's going to age beautifully, this film. In Megalopolis, Francis Ford Coppola is blending elements of Roman history with modern urbanism to craft a vision of a utopian society struggling to balance power and progress. The Roman Empire is often seen as the quintessential civilization that influenced much of modern governance, architecture and social structure. Coppola mirrors the rise and fall of Rome, particularly its ambition to construct monumental public works such as aqueducts and temples that symbolize both power and civilization. The film's futuristic vision of New York City, which has been devastated and needs rebuilding, evokes the grandeur of ancient Rome with a twist. It emphasizes modern urbanism and technological progress. Coppola's New York is imagined as a new Rome, a city at the center of civilization. Through the lens of contemporary architecture and political systems, Megalopolis looked at how societies might rebuild after a fall, paralleling Rome's attempts to preserve its grandeur even, uh, even as it fell into decline. The conflict between tradition and innovation, a theme central to the film, mirrors the Roman struggle between republican ideals and the authoritarianism of the empire. In Megalopolis, Coppola imagines how the modern world grapples with these same issues, with city planning and architecture serving as metaphors for broader societal struggles. Adam Driver's architect protagonist becomes a figure reminiscent of great Roman builders, using cutting-edge technology to create a new vision of society, but still bound by the eternal tension between utopia and reality, ambition and hubris. By juxtaposing the timeless elements of Roman influence with futuristic urban planning, Coppola explores how societies evolve, how they are rebuilt after collapse, and the ethical dilemmas that arise with unchecked ambition. This blend of ancient Rome's legacy and modern urbanism provides a rich philosophical backbone to the narrative, exploring the cyclical nature of civilizations and the dream of creating a better world from the ashes of the old. And there's no way you can look at this type of imagery and this type of thematic ideology and say, oh, it's a bad movie. You can't. There's something profound going on with this movie. It is definitely self-indulgent, but it's interesting. What really bugs me, actually, is having not made a movie for so many decades, I obviously, well, not obviously, but I almost wanted to go into this movie and coming out disliking it, which is a weird thing to say, but it's because of Coppola's stance on the Marvel movies where he's like, that's not real cinema. And I was like, dude, screw you. Real cinema is people going to the cinema, having a good time, having the, the shared experience, it, 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 having the shared experience and thinking better of cinema as a result. Movies doing well is good for cinema. Doesn't matter what type of movies they are. In equal, in this case, moving, movies doing badly is bad for cinema. Also valid. You look at this movie and it just oozes class. It, again, it oozes indulgence and being too bloated and being a bit nonsensical and geriatric. Yeah, it, it's guilty of all that. I get it. It makes you think, man really makes you think every single frame I was looking at had a level of artistic merit to it, serious artistic merit. Listen, there, there are some people who are looking and go, it's just some weird stuff, some weird crap. And again, I get it. I think there was something really interesting going on with Megalopolis and I think I'm going to end up being quite a big defender of it. Coppola's lifelong obsession with power politics and the human condition is a consistent theme that runs through much of his filmography, from his early works to his latest projects such as this. Coppola has often explored the dynamic of authority and its impact on individuals, families, and entire societies, drawing heavily on the concept of power, both as a destructive and transformative force. 
One of the most emblematic expressions of this obsession is the Godfather trilogy, where Coppola delves deep into the intricate relationships between crime, politics, and family. In this trilogy, power is seen as a mechanism that can destroy personal integrity and family bonds, a tragedy at the core of the human condition. Coppola's fascination with the personal cost of power is also evident in Apocalypse Now, where he expands his vision to a global scale by focusing on war and imperialism. In Apocalypse Now, power operates in a surreal, almost mythological space, further underscoring Coppola's preoccupation with the fine line between leadership and tyranny. With Megalopolis, Coppola seems to be drawing upon these earlier themes, but with a more philosophical lens. The film explores the rebuilding of a futuristic New York after a catastrophe, echoing the ambition of Rome's ancient architects and leaders. The focus on rebuilding a utopian society ties directly into his fascination with politics, governance, and the tension between individual aspiration and collective good. Coppola is interested not just in the dynamics of power, but in how it intersects with human nature. The desire for control, the vulnerability to corruption, and the longing for redemption or transcendence. And again, think about what I've just said, which Megalopolis does. And I hate to say, God damn it, he has a point. When was the last time a Marvel movie made me think like this? Or a big Hollywood blockbuster dealt with themes? Oh, it's like the intersection between power and, and how it corrupts human nature. Like, it's deep. You can't help it. Maybe I'm a sucker for this type of stuff. I said he's given me the hardest review of the year to do. I don't know how to score it. I do not know how to score this film. You know what? I'm going to break convention. I'm not scoring it. I don't know what score to give it. I'll say this thought. I think history is going to be kind to this movie. It may be a flop now. I think it's going to age like a fine wine. Megalopolis is a grand culmination of Coppola's decades-long exploration of power, politics, and the human condition. As with his previous work, Coppola delves into the tension between authority, corruption, and moral integrity, weaving these themes into the fabric of both personal and societal narratives. Megalopolis, with its futuristic vision of a city being rebuilt after a catastrophe, seems to reflect his fascination with the cyclical nature of civilization. How societies rise, fall, and rebuild much like ancient Rome. The parallels between Roman history and modern urbanism in the film highlight his philosophical approach to the fragility of human ambition in the face of monumental power structures. At its core, Megalopolis is not just a story about architecture and urban planning, but a reflection on the broader human experience. How we as individuals and societies grapple with the forces that shape our destiny. Coppola's obsession with power, with its familial, political, or institutional, remains central to his project, showing that even in the most modern settings, the same ancient conflicts of control, ambition, and the human soul persist. Screw it. I really like this film. It's taken me three days to come to that conclusion. When I came out of the cinema and the teller, said, the teller who I know at the Dome, said to me, like, what did you think? My first response was, I don't know. And I'm not saying it to be hipster or contrarian. It's really festered in my mind. And I think I like this film. I think I like this film. According to Rotten Tomatoes, that makes me part of the 34% of the internet that does. Who knew? <laughs> Who bloody knew? But I want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on Megalopolis? Bloated, indulgent, silly, pile of crap, genius will age well i don't know any more superlatives let me know your thoughts and your comments down below there's a subscribe button here another video for you to watch up here i'm going to be covering the london film festival over the course of the next two weeks so stay tuned for all of that on the youtube channel and i look forward to seeing you guys all very soon bye for now